What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and we are with another vehicle today as you can see in the background and this is a 2023 Toyota Corolla SE Hybrid All Wheel Drive. So this is going to be the review. Let's uh, let's jump right into it because you know these are already like anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes long so let's roll. You guys know the deal, starting with the exterior and then working to the interior and then we'll take it on a drive. This is almost like a Nardo gray. It's a little bit of a darker shade than your traditional, what I would call Nardo, but uh, nonetheless, it looks really good, especially with gunmetal gray wheels. My goodness, I honestly, the exterior of this thing, I, I would honestly give it a 10 out of 10. Moving down to the headlights, you have all LED headlamps and then you have a sporty mesh front grille and you can see it actually is, you know, cooling, you can go through it and everything. So it is pretty nice. Underneath the hood is a 1.8 liter uh, four cylinder. It's pushing out, hold your breath here, sit down, 96 horsepower. <laughs> but nonetheless, it gets really good gas mileage and uh, we'll get to that in a second. Again, touching on these wheels, I mean, my goodness, those things look so good. Moving on around to the mirrors quickly, you do have blind spot monitoring. Hopefully you can see it on the corner right there. You have keyless entry and exit, as you can see there for locking, unlock, you just put your hand in there. Um, and then up top, you have a sunroof. You have a driver's side fuel door. You guys know I love that. And it is in this vehicle is right around a 11.3 or 11.4 gallon gas tank. Um, and gas mileage, you're going to be getting around 41 highway, 47 city. And obviously it's because it's a hybrid. Um, so your combined is around 44-ish, depending on you know how you drive, of course. And definitely unique, you have an all-wheel drive badge down here on the door, which is definitely a unique placement. I have not seen that before. If there's other vehicles, you guys just let me know, but that's my first time. Coming around to the back, you have your Corolla badge on the left, SE on the right, and obviously your hybrid badge as well. And then the bottom is actually pretty sporty here. Uh, it looks pretty good. It looks like, you know, I don't want to say a race car diffuser, but you know, it trying to emulate uh, some sporty style and I think they did a good job right there and then obviously the trunk if you want to get in there's a button underneath you just press it and this is what you get in the rear there is actually a lot of space in here you could probably fit I don't know three golf bags maybe at least two for sure plus stuff in the back if you wanted and then you have this little sporty lip on the back. It's uh, paint to match, which is pretty nice. And I'm sure some people may take them off and do black, uh, like a gloss black. Either way, it looks really good. Alrighty, that pretty much summarizes the exterior. Let's jump on inside. Starting with the rear, the first thing that I notice is the door doesn't seem to open very wide in the sense of like 
where the actual seat is where you have to step into. Obviously not a huge deal, especially if you're younger or a ch child or whatever. But nonetheless, I just noticed that like just opening the door. Now, you guys know that I always test getting in and out to see if it's easy or not. So let's test it in this. So yeah, you do have to step forward a little bit like up in front of you, as I've already kind of noted. Going down, you're definitely gonna have to duck in order to get into the back obviously not meant to be a full-size car uh, so expected to be honest so no issues there okay so i am five foot nine for those of you guys that are new to the channel and i feel like i'm shaquille o'neal i have about an inch and a half back here of headroom now that's sitting just all the way against the seat and this is my driver's position and i've got about I don't know three and a half inches in there so I could easily you know slide down and now I've got a bunch of uh, headroom and actually I'm more comfortable like this but yeah not bad right here in the center you do have some fancy cup holders but uh, I do like the look of the seats you got that sporty red line in the middle a um, little contrast with the red in there it does look pretty nice you do have two little charging ports right there off the back of the center console and over to the left nothing too crazy just your door handle and then obviously your window switch this is actually soft right here and that's really key in my opinion because that's right where your elbow rests and that's what's most important the rest of it is kind of hard plastic but again uh, expected on this vehicle but here is actually a really nice touch i did not expect that and that's really good and that's pretty much going to sum up the back seat let's jump into the front so looking at the front uh obviously it's prioritized for the front it's the door opens really wide uh and it's very easy as far as where you're stepping to get in so let's see what it's like uh stepping into it here Yeah, very, very natural getting into the front. Uh, at least for me at five foot nine, I didn't really duck excessively at all. I just came down normal and it was good. So pretty comfortable getting in and out of the front, which in my opinion is the most important. Over on this left-hand side, pretty standard. Your mirror uh, adjustment, lock, unlock, and all of your window switches. Over here on the left, you'll see a few buttons. You've got your fuel door on the far right, uh, brightness of lights on the interior on the far left, traction control, and automatic um, headlights there, which obviously, or, well, high beams, I should say, automatic. <sighs> Moving up to the steering wheel, on the left-hand side, uh, you've got all of your menu stuff right up there that you can change. You've got your volume buttons on the right hand side. You've got all of your cruise control settings. And then this is for your track slash audio um, stuff down there below. Up in the instrument cluster, you'll see there you do have a screen in the middle, but the rest is analog. My understanding is if you go up to the XLE, then you will get a full instrument cluster that is LED. Uh, is my understanding and uh, again I haven't had my hands on one I'm just going off of uh, the Toyota website so uh, yeah do your own homework on that one I guess if I'm wrong I'm 99% sure the thing is if you go up to the XLE you can't get all-wheel drive so we'll talk about that later but nonetheless moving over to the right we do have a nice touch screen there again very Toyota Lexus it's all straightforward all the same very responsive i don't have any issues with uh with the touch screen there down below you do have actual buttons for your temperature control it is a single zone kind of wish it was dual zone um, but nonetheless it's so much better to at least have uh, a single zone so you can set the temperature opposed to you know playing with the old school knobs hot cold game moving down below you can see my phone sitting here but there is a little cubby hole back in there to uh put some items maybe your phone like that you have your drive mode selector right there and obviously the gear shift you have two cup holders and even a big water bottle like this does fit in either cup holder which is actually pretty nifty electronic parking brake 
And then your center console is soft touch, which is nice. Uh, nice little accent stitching there, which is pretty sharp looking. Opening it up, um, pretty small. Not gonna fit much in there, won't lie to you there. Uh, and then a couple of little charging uh, ports there. The seats, as you can probably tell, for driver side and passenger side on this SE are all manual adjustment. So just keep that in mind. So obviously over here on the left, you're not gonna have any memory seating because you just do the old slide. And this one in particular does have the upgraded JBL sound system. Uh, and it does sound pretty good. Uh, I don't have any issues with the sound system. Definitely nice to have a optional upgraded sound system. Moving up above, uh, pretty standard uh, buttons there. Nothing to really go over. And then you do have a little bit of a sunroof as we already pointed out. And last but not least, again, we'll go over some of the stats and figures that I've already kind of jotted over very quickly uh, and the window sticker before we take it on a drive. As you can see for the gas mileage, 47 city, 41 highway, combined average of 44. And again, you're gonna get around a 11.4 gallon gasoline tank in this. This is the all-wheel drive version. Again, if you decide to go up to the XLE, you cannot get all-wheel drive. I'm not sure why that is, very odd to me, but nonetheless, you can get an LE or an SE in all-wheel drive. Um, and again, we're with a 1.8 liter uh, four-cylinder, and we're pushing around 96 horsepower. Uh, as already mentioned, obviously it is a hybrid, your total cost on this moving down is right at $30,388. All right, I think that's pretty much really what you wanna know. Uh, the very last thing I will talk about, and I'll talk about it again on the drive, zero to 60 on this thing is right around nine seconds. Um, maybe 9.2, depending on where you're at. But you'll get a pretty true time at least because it is all wheel drive. Obviously, this isn't meant for any kind of speed, uh, but nine seconds is a little on the slow side because even the all new Prius is right around, I believe like the six and a half to seven mark. And obviously that's all wheel drive and yeah. So it, it's a little bit on the slow side by today's standards, but you're getting such good gas mileage. I mean, I don't think you're buying this for that. So not a huge deal. All right, let's get this thing on the road. As we're starting out on the road, you may or may not be able to tell, we are in full EV mode at 21 miles an hour, and it's very quiet. You can hear the slight EV hum, if you will, but, uh, I mean, very standard for a hybrid vehicle. Um, this vehicle, as far as the hybrid and how it interacts with the motor, because I think every hybrid I've driven has been kind of different in that aspect. Um, I've got to say, I've got to say that this thing while it's quiet and it does good at kicking back and forth on the freeway in particular it is like it if you're in normal mode i should say in normal mode it's kicking back and forth between motor and just full ev pretty frequently um i've never seen that in any other vehicle usually it's kind of like even on the freeway i actually don't see a lot of hybrids kick on for full ev um, and if they do, it's actually for a little bit longer of a period of time. This one's kind of back and forth, but luckily and thankfully it's pretty smooth as to how it kicks back and forth. So you can't tell too much unless you're literally just staring at your RPM gauge to see it kick on and off. So keep that in mind. Um, not that it really affects you, but don't, I guess, freak out, uh, if you're driving this thing and you just see it just constantly back and forth, totally normal. Now, acceleration to the floor. Yeah, it's not fast. <laughs> it's not fast. That's not what it's made for. It's made for the gas mileage. And again, so far driving it, um, which I've driven it eh, about 35, 40 miles, I've certainly gotten the uh, gas mileage that they've claimed. So that's a good thing. Let's go over visibility. 
visibility in this vehicle is pretty good. This pillar in particular is a little bit wider, I would say, than uh, many vehicles uh, in today's uh, segment. Uh, but it's not bad. You have blind spot monitoring as well if you have an issue with it. But as far as the other side, there's like literally virtually no blind spot. And the windshield is definitely nice and big. The roof line on this is certainly a little bit sleeker um, than maybe what you might be used to from previous Corollas uh, because the windshield view is slightly less, but it's still really good. I mean, again, I own and drive supercars uh, and I'm very used to like no visibility, but this thing, even out of all the cars that I drive, is pretty good. As we're cruising along here and I'm setting my cruise control, uh, this vehicle has adaptive cruise control and it has lane centering. And just like I've given all Toyota slash Lexus as of recent anyway, it's really good. I mean, they have perfected lane centering well. I mean, this thing like just stays so center of the lane. It's actually really impressive. Uh, I love the way Toyota Lexus uh, has perfected it. So if you're looking for a vehicle that's right around that $30,000 mark and all wheel drive, and good on gas mileage with the technology features i think uh, you'd be very happy uh, with this vehicle because especially it looks good as well comfort wise uh on this se obviously you're not getting any sort of leather seats you don't have power seats so you know you're in between clicks on gears for the seats if you will um but it i mean it's comfortable in my opinion uh, obviously i'm a huge fan of leather but you can always go up to the XLE and you can certainly get, you know, the leather uh, seats. So it's not like the car doesn't offer it. It's just what trim level you decide to get. But nonetheless, the cushions on this thing are actually really comfortable. Um, so yeah, I can't complain about the seats really at all. I wish it had memory seating, at least on the XLE, but unfortunately it doesn't have memory seating, um, but is what it is. Again, you're looking at a vehicle that's, you know, coming in at 30 grand, so. <laughs> it's hard to hard to complain with that kind of price tag in today's age. Let's test a turn at 20 miles an hour. And then let's just keep turning. It actually has pretty good handling. You got the camera's probably going everywhere because GoPro stabilization or whatever that they try to get. Uh, but nonetheless, it actually handles really well. Uh, suspension wise like as far as again handling it does well as far as the bump side of things it's actually pretty good um, it's it's not again it if you're expecting to get a Lexus ride quality in a Corolla you just I don't know why you'd ever expect that um, so some people that I know are that may come from a Lexus and they think they're gonna get this and it's just not as good but it's still good. Again, 30 grand, keep that in mind. It, it's really good, uh, especially you go back even two, three years ago, it, it's light years above that. So these things just continually improve and as always, Toyota and Lexus just really impressed me overall. Speaking of the drive modes very quickly, because again, you guys are always asking about that. Is there a noticeable difference in this car? Yes and no. So obviously, uh, Eco is definitely, you put your foot almost to the floor and it's pretty much gonna be as slow as possible to get your good gas mileage, which is a good thing. You want that in Eco. That is literally the name of the game. Uh, as far as normal, I, I think it's normal. It seems fine. But sport in this vehicle is hard to really feel sporty. Um, this has a CVT transmission, so it's not like you really feel it like holding a gear way out or anything. And again, it's not a fast car. So with that being said, sport mode to me doesn't make a huge difference uh, from normal, but that's just me. I don't really feel too big of a difference, even suspension wise or anything. Um, so I just leave it normal personally. I, I like that. and. Yeah, so it's completely up to you how you want to drive it. But those are the differences uh, slash lack of differences for sport mode versus normal. But eco and normal, big difference, you can certainly tell, um, which is a good thing. So in summary for this vehicle, again, if I'm in the market for a vehicle around 30 grand or less, and I want all-wheel drive with a hybrid, 
just to get that really good gas mileage, especially if you live in the city and you do a lot of city driving. I gotta be honest, this is, this is a really good vehicle to look at. Definitely go test drive it and check it out because you're getting a lot of technology too. Again, lane centering and adaptive cruise control on a vehicle that's right around the 30 grand or under mark, that's good. I mean, I don't care what you say, that's good. Um, and again, it rides really good. I have no complaints other than really, I wish it was just a little bit faster, like like a eight second, like one second faster, zero to 60. But again, most people are not gonna care about that, hardly even in the slightest. But overall, very nice vehicle. And just like that, we're gonna wrap up today's video. If there's anything else you guys wanna see, just let me know. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.